Congratulations, Kat. You've got such a nice brain. In his first breakout study, assistant professor of neuroscience Jim Cohen examined the response of subjects to human touch while they were in a stressful situation, anticipating a low-level shock while undergoing functional magnetic resonance imaging. He quantified, to a dramatic extent, what lovers, poets, and parents already knew. A loving touch reassures. The hypothalamus is a region of the brain, right in here, that has to do with the, the way that you reg, uh, regulate the release of stress hormones in your body. Stress hormones are designed to rem take those building blocks away from those what we call sort of ongoing construction projects and use them to, to deal with emergencies, like saving your life if you have to run away. If you're chronically stressed, then you're chronically deprived of those building blocks that repair your body, and so you get sick more often, you don't recover from illness as fast, and you die younger. When you are getting your hand held by a, by a, a, a significant other, this region of the brain is much less active than if you're by uh, yourself or you're holding the hand of a stranger. But what we didn't expect necessarily, at least not to this degree, was that the quality of your relationship was gonna have such a huge effect. If you're holding the hand of a, of a spouse in a good relationship, this region of the brain is significantly less active. It's, it's, it's co roughly comparable to taking a drug. Uh, people who are diagnosed with congestive heart failure, if they're in even in severe congestive heart failure, it's a very serious condition, uh, they can live twice, sometimes three times as long if they're in a happy relationship. One of the things that, that we're learning in other domains, uh, that, that this is shedding some light on in terms of mechanism, is that uh, people with, with, uh, uh, who undergo heart surgery, for example, recover faster and are out of the, uh, the, the, the hospital faster when they're allowed to receive visitors. We are root and branch social creatures. We evolved in a social context. The structures that govern our emotion and our ability to regulate our emotion all evolved in social context. So in fact, you, you look at these literatures and there's a big literature on emotion in the brain and there's this emerging literature on social processes in the brain and it's, they're, they're all talking about precisely the same structures.